Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, has been given a very special Commonwealth role as her husband Prince Charles prepares to become king of the country. The 71-year-old Duchess was named as the first ever vice patron of the Royal Commonwealth Society, RCS, on the organization's 150th anniversary. During an engagement to mark the RCS's milestone, Camilla was welcomed by Ghanaian drummers who, according to Clarence House, were playing drums from Gambia, Nigeria, and Ghana, the three countries which the Duchess will visit next month with the Prince of Wales. Camilla's new role comes as the Queen prepares to wind down from her duties as head of the Commonwealth, with Charles Prime to take over. Prince Charles was named as the next head of the Commonwealth to succeed his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, earlier this year. The Queen has filled the role since 1952, but the position is not hereditary. There had been suggestions the positions should rotate around member states as it would be more democratic, however Prince Charles will take the reins. During her first engagement as vice patron of the RCS, Camilla delivered a speech to mark the important day for the organization. Praising RCS's work, she said, you have championed human rights, democracy, and sustainable development across 53 member states. You have much of which to be greatly proud. Prince Charles and Camilla will embark on a nine-day visit to Gambia, Ghana and Nigeria to celebrate the UK's historic ties with the Commonwealth nations later this month. The historic trip will take place over nine days from October 31st. They will return to London just in time for Prince Charles' 70th birthday on November 14th. Clarence House said, Their Royal Highness's visit will celebrate the UK's historic ties with these three Commonwealth nations, and also our dynamic contemporary partnerships with each of them in areas ranging from business to the arts, defence cooperation to medical research. The tour will also highlight the people-to-people -people links between our countries and the invaluable contribution they make to our shared prosperity and security. The Queen and her son, Prince Charles, did not have a warm and cozy bond and the pair are said to have a rocky relationship over the years, an explosive documentary has revealed. Prince Charles the Queen's firstborn, was notably distant from his mother throughout his childhood. A new Netflix documentary, The Royal House of Windsor, claims Charles was not close to the Queen growing up, and was usually cared for house nannies and royal staff while his mother served as Queen of England. Penny Jenner, author and royal expert said, the Queen, to be fair to her, was being Queen. For most of Charles' childhood and the rest of his life, she was on a pedestal and he did not have a warm and cozy relationship with his mother. Queen Elizabeth II was coronated in 1953, a year after her father King George VI died from coronary thrombosis. Following her father's unexpected death, Elizabeth was immediately thrust into royal duties, fulfilling her role as the Queen of England and head of the Commonwealth. At this time, Charles was only four years old and his mother, the Queen was notably absent during his childhood while she fulfilled her royal duties. The Prince was reportedly cared for by nannies and other palace staffers while his mother was away, and also became very close to his grandmother, the Queen Mother, who helped raise him. The Queen Mother influenced Charles' perception of the throne, drilling its importance to him at a very young age. According to royal experts, the Queen Mother wanted to avoid a repeat of her son, the Duke of Windsor's rebellion to the throne. In 1969, Charles gave his first TV interview, explaining how his future wife had to fulfill an equally important role in the royal family. Speaking to Cliff Michelmore and Brian Connell from the BBC, he said, It's obviously a problem because you've got to remember that when you marry, in my position you are going to marry somebody who perhaps one day is going to become queen and you've got to choose somebody very carefully I think, who can fulfill this particular role. Because people like you perhaps would expect quite a lot from somebody like that. And it's got to be somebody pretty special. Charles also had a rocky relationship with his father, Prince Philip, who tried to implement a tough demeanor into the future king. Ems Jr. added, I think what Prince Philip wanted in a son was a man in his own image. A man's man. A rough tough outdoorsy real alpha male. 
and what he got in Charles was a really sensitive child. Prince Charles received a warm welcome in Northumberland, where he kick-started a whirlwind two-day solo tour in England's northeast by visiting one of the most iconic British World Heritage sites and trying some of the local delicatessens. The Prince of Wales was all smiles when he arrived at the Sill, a national landscape discovery centre, to officially mark its opening earlier today with his wife Camilla nowhere to be seen. The heir to the throne received a full visitor experience to the unique site, launched in July 2017 and regarded by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, as one of the world's natural beauties. Clarence House said on Twitter, the Prince viewed exhibition displays and here's how it lands year around activity, education and events program delivers 30,000 activity days for visitors, schools, businesses, universities and community groups. The Prince, who sported a great suit with a colorful tie and handkerchief, seemed positively impressed by the building's grossed roof which has been built to mimic the shapes and geology of the Great Windsill and natural rock feature. Admiring it, Charles was heard saying, Aha, look at that. After meeting the staff of the visitor center, Prince Charles unveiled a plaque officially marking the opening of the sill. The plaque read, The Sill, National Landscape Discovery Center. To commemorate the visit of HRH the Prince of Wales officially marking the opening of the sill. 12 September 2018 Charles also met with members of the staff from the SIL's 86-bed youth hostel and discussed the running of the business with them. Despite having in front of him a day packed with official engagements, the prince took the time to meet schoolchildren visiting the center. He could be heard jokingly asking the youngsters if they were going to be given lunch. And he laughed when one of the pupils enthusiastically nodded in reply to his question on whether they had learned something during their visits to the center. He and a teacher agreed that the children seemed well trained. Prince Charles later visited the famous Hexham's Farmer's Market, where he was welcomed once again by hundreds of people and Hexham Mayor Tom Gillanders. A baby holding a Union flag attracted the prince's attention, as Charles sweetly told him, Bedtime, rest time. At the market, guided by Neil Brown, Northumberland County Council's markets manager, Charles met traders from the Produced in Northumberland scheme, a project promoting local businesses. Enthusiastic stall owners offered the royal samples of their goods, including jam, cheese and honey, and gave him a number of goodie bags. Eli's Poppy, a trader known as Sauce Queen went as far as making a special HRH delicacy which she named Royal Blue, and consists in a combination of Cropwell Bishop Stilton, White Truffle and White Wine. The prince's visit continued to the birthplace of heritage gardener Lancelot Capability Brown and the Kilder Salmon Center. Charles's tour of the Northeast continues tomorrow, when he will travel to the Moreland Spirit Company's Heppelgen Distillery in Marpeth before concluding the trip with a visit to the Alnwick Garden. Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, did not join Prince Charles today. According to the royal family's engagements diary she did not have any events to attend. Camilla was considered an unsuitable bride for Prince Charles when they were young, because she wasn't a virgin, according to the documentary The Royal House of Windsor. The Duchess of Cornwall had lived a bit and her experience ruled her out as a wife, it was revealed by the documentary narrator. This experience was clarified by historian Dr. Piers Brendan who said, it was absolutely vital to have on the throne somebody who was a virgin. A future queen must have no past. Camilla Shand, as she was known at the time, met the heir to the throne at Lord Mountbatten's home, who was Charles' great-uncle. She was a vivacious, horse-mad member of the Sussex country set and the two had a very warm and vibrant relationship. Biographer and journalist Christopher Wilson said Charles himself was red-blooded and passionate and when the two met it was like a thunderclap. Author Penny Jr. said, she was funny, she was outspoken, a bit outlandish she lived a bit. And he was still very green behind the ears and he just fell for her big time. 
However, the expectation on Prince Charles to pick the perfect bride to be the future queen meant that Camilla's past was an obstacle. Ems Jr. said, I mean, there is no suggestion at all that Camilla was a loose woman, but she had had boyfriends. The Prince of Wales felt a strong sense of duty, particularly considering the legacy of the Duke of Windsor, who abdicated the throne to marry divorcee Wallace Simpson. Camilla had been in an on and off relationship with a polo friend of Charles called Andrew Parker Bowles, who she later married. Charles himself left to join the Navy and was apparently devastated when he found out about the marriage. He dated a string of different women before marrying Diana Spencer, who became the Princess of Wales. Both Camilla and Charles were to divorce their spouses, of course, and were married in 2005. <laughs>